Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 16.3 has been out for a few days, almost a full business week at this point, and there's more to talk about. I wanted to talk about some of the features as quite a few of you had some questions. We'll also talk about battery life as many of you are wondering if you should upgrade based on battery life. So I'll have some statistics specifically about that a little bit later based off the YouTube community poll. And you'll see here at the time of this video, there's over 12,000 votes and 236 comments. I've taken the statistics off of those comments to see what percentage actually says that battery is better or worse. We'll talk about that a little bit later. We'll also talk about iOS 17 and a few other things as well. Now, the first thing is with iOS 16.3, Apple introduced Apple security keys that can be found in your settings. And then in under your settings, tap on your name at the top, then go to password and security. And now you can log into your Apple ID using a FIDO certified security key. And you need two of these to log in. And many of you had questions as to what I use. So let's first set this up as you need two keys to do that. So we'll add a security key, give it a moment. It says you need two security keys. We'll tap continue and I'll show you the first one here. We'll give it a moment to complete. Let me get my key. Once you put in your iPhone passcode, it's going to ask for the first key. Now you'll need a lightning compatible key or NFC. This is an NFC key. You'll see it saw the first key. This one's attached to my keychain, and then we can name it and tap next. Then we'll have to get our second key. So let me put these in my pocket and we'll get the second key. And I'm actually using Google's Titan security keys. And I'll show you a couple options in a moment, but these are $30. So I've been using them. And since I use Google with YouTube, you can use these with those as well and any other FIDO certified device. So it looks very similar to the one we had before. We'll add this as a secondary key. Now it's adding key two. You'll see we can name it. We hit next. And then we can log into all of these devices with that, or just some of the devices. So we can stay signed into all or remove our account from all of them. And it says your security keys have been added. Then we tap done. If we go back into our security keys, we can add another one, remove all the keys or whatever we'd like. So like I said, these are security keys. YubiKey makes some, they're actually lightning compatible as well. If you don't want to use an NFC based one, those are $50. I use the Google one. Like I said, it's the Titan key, same thing, same standard, and you can get one with a USB a or USB C style. And they're about $30. So if you go to buy here, you'll see that you can pick one for $30 or 35 for the USB C style. That's the one I'm using. I'll link these in the description if you want to get one yourself, but that's what I'm using for this account and others. Apple released a Safari technology preview this week as well. So we didn't get an iOS 16.4 release just yet, but they did release Safari technology preview and you can see the update here. Apple really doesn't say a whole lot about these typically, but this is Safari preview 162 and it was released on the 25th of January. And then if we go into the release notes, typically it will just tell you that it's got bug fixes and more, and then they give more information about all of the different things here, such as media or web API or more accessibility and just changes for developers in general. So that's available. Also, if you use WhatsApp and you have a Mac, there's now a client that's available that you can use on windows or Mac. So windows users have had this maybe for a little while, but there's now a beta for Mac users. So if you want the client on your Mac, you can do that if you don't use iMessage regularly. So it gives you an option to just chat using that very seamlessly. And it's a really nice option, especially if you're not using iMessage message, or if you are, it's just an additional easy way to get into WhatsApp. So that's available now. Now, also something I thought I'd mention is iOS 15.7.3 that released this week, but this time around, there's no IPSW file or install file for iPhone eight, all the way up to the iPhone 13 pro and pro max. Last time we had some beta files for developers where you can install it. And this one's actually on 15.7.2 on an eight plus. Unfortunately, if we go to settings, they don't give you the option to actually install anything except for iOS 16. So you'll see here saying iOS 16.3. And if we go back to about, you can see this one is on 15.7.2. So unfortunately there doesn't seem to be any updates. I thought Apple was going to push security updates to these devices, but now they want you to upgrade to iOS 16. That's something that's a little bit of a shame. I would like to see people be able to go back to the recent versions that they liked best as long as they're secure. 
Now also iOS 12.5.7 released. I did a quick short about that. This is an iPhone six and talked about that a little bit and you'll see how bright this is. That's why I just have the case on it, but it's super bright in the light. So you'll see, this is a six that is a little bit old and it doesn't seem to hold a charge very well. So I tried to turn it on and then it will turn back off, but it will work. Also Apple released 15.7.3. Both of these were just security updates iOS 12.5.7 had one security update, 15.7.3 actually had five security updates. So both of those have been updated. And again, I did a quick short about that, just talking about the security update. Now also code in iOS 16.3 continues to hint at the introduction of Apple music classical. We still haven't seen that, but Apple seems to have a whole separate setup within the code for that pointing to a new app. So we're still waiting for that instead of just a classical music section within the actual music store or Apple music. So we should be seeing that maybe in the near future. This is loading really slow for some reason, but if we go to browse by genre, we still have classical, but right now, unfortunately we don't have that separate app since Apple bought prime phonic. So we're still waiting for that. Also, one other thing with iOS 16.3 is Apple some time ago, removed the ability to upgrade to the new home kit architecture. They had some bugs with it and they disabled it and pulled that ability. However, according to a new post on Twitter, from Aaron P 613 and Nicholas Alvarez, it looks like they're working on bringing it back soon. So you'll see here, Nicholas said, so Apple's new home architecture, AKA home hub two was a buggy failure and they had to disable the button to upgrade to it. Say hello to home hub two version two. Aaron P 613 said definitely seems like it and shows the code for it. So this is something that could be enabled very soon with 16.4, or they could push it over the air. So everyone could upgrade to it just like they removed it. So we could see that soon and hopefully things work much better this time around. Now this week we had some news about iOS 16.4 and iOS 17 showing in Mac rumors database. They've observed this before where people are testing it and you can actually see what operating system they're using. So Apple is testing it, apparently looking at their website. We've seen this in the past and iOS 16.4, we would expect pretty soon. I really expected it this past week, but it looks like we'll probably have it as soon as next week, maybe next Tuesday or Wednesday. That's typically what Apple does with betas. But again, they could be changing this up and releasing it later, giving us some time with iOS 16.3 and maybe have some small updates in between there. But I would really expect a beta as soon as next week, since we didn't have one this week. Now there was a lot of information of supposed leaks about iOS 17 this past week. However, Mark Gurman has said they're not true on Twitter. You can see, he says, beware of any stories you read today about iOS 17 entirely based on a troll account known to make up fake information. Very surprised at reputable sites covering it. So just wanted to make you aware of that. There was a bunch of information about it and he's basically saying it's not true. So he's been fairly reliable in the past, Mark Gerben. So we'll have to wait and see what iOS 17 brings, but many people think it's going to be more of a stability update. And one thing that I've actually thought about is since we're not getting any major updates with iOS 16.3, probably 0.4, maybe Apple's planning something bigger than that with iOS 17 maybe a redesign of some icons or maybe just nothing at all. And they're really focusing on the new AR VR headset, but either way I'm hoping for maybe at least a few bigger changes than we've seen in the past, but stability definitely would be welcome. Now, as far as future releases, well, we did get one story today about the iPhone 15 saying that it's said to get Wi-Fi 6E. To me, this is fairly obvious. We already have Wi-Fi 6E in the M2 devices with the iPad pro, the new Mac mini MacBook pros, putting it in the next iPhone makes a lot of sense. So I would expect that, but they also said it would be limited to pro and pro max models, which would mean to me that we're going to get the a 16 bionic in the regular models with the a 17 in the next models. Those would have Wi-Fi 6E. This isn't a huge deal. As far as Wi-Fi, I have that at my house. It's a nice benefit, but it's not a huge benefit. Like some people had thought. So Wi-Fi seven will probably be a better benefit as far as that goes. Also iPhone 15 is said to have really thin bezels and be curved again. 
makes a lot of sense. Every three years they change up the design. They're definitely going to change it up again, specifically what it looks like though. We haven't heard yet. Some people are saying it looks more Android like than ever though. So as far as Android phone look, but I would expect Apple to maybe come in with something a little different since supposedly the high end models will be titanium. And Apple also is working on that AR VR headset. We should see it in a few months, according to many different people. And they're working on that as far as a new OS. So integrating that with iOS and Mac OS, we could see some big changes this year as far as what it looks like overall. It's supposed to be able to be used as a Mac display and can switch between AR and VR modes. So I'm not going to speculate too much here, but I think that'll be really different to see something that can switch between different modes and to see how Apple does it as opposed to say Oculus, for example. Now, as far as the overall experience with iOS 16.3, well, the AirPods case bug seems to be fixed, at least for me. These are my AirPods 3. If we open these up, give it a second here to connect with all these devices around, it takes a moment, but you can see the case there already. It's in my widget, it's showing 51%, showing the headphones, and it seems to be working properly where it wasn't for me before. So it looks like it's fixed for me. Some people still seem to have that issue. Also, if we go into YouTube and we go into one of my videos, rotate it, you'll see it's much smoother now. YouTube actually updated this with their own app. So as long as you have that updated app, that should be much smoother this time around. So that's something that they fixed. It was not fixed with 16.3, it was fixed with a YouTube update. Now there have been some odd experiences based off what you're experiencing and what I'm experiencing. One of them is squared off notifications. When I bring down notifications, sometimes they're square and immediately go back to this rounded look. I see that on and off throughout the day, sometimes when going into notifications. So that's a bit odd. Others are saying their cell signal is actually weaker this time around where it will flip to SOS because they don't have signal where they would have signal before. Now it's hard to sort of figure out if it's a cell tower or weather based or anything else, but if you're seeing it consistently where you weren't before, it seems like it definitely is an issue for some. That camera bug still remains. Apple didn't fix that in the most recent update where you take a photo and it's a little bit darker than what you actually took in the picture. So if we take a picture of this iPhone with a case coup case on it again, and let's just take a screenshot here so you can compare. It doesn't appear that they've actually fixed it. It looks a little bit darker this time around. So definitely some issues as far as that goes. Also, the major issue I'm having is lag when swiping home again. If I'm playing music and swiping or just sometimes closing out an app, if I go into podcasts and let's just play this one here, swipe up to the dynamic island. Of course, it's nice and smooth now, but sometimes when swiping out, it's just super stuttery. And a restart of the phone will fix this, but it seems to happen over and over. Also, some people are seeing a lot of lag in the shortcuts app. I haven't noticed this myself, but some people say it just freezes and locks up and it continues to be an issue. Some have said they have issues with Wi-Fi. I haven't experienced that at all. In fact, it's been very solid for me with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth as well. You saw how quickly the the AirPods connected, no problems there. And with multiple devices around, sometimes it gets a little confused, but they connect pretty fast. It's already connected on the iPad. They connect pretty fast in general, especially if it's only one device in front of me. And I've had no issues with it switching or anything like that. Now, as far as battery life, I really looked into it this time just to give you a very accurate depiction of what it's like. So first let's go into my battery life. We'll go down to battery battery health. I'm still at 99%. You can see how many battery cycles I have here using coconut battery. And if we go back and take a look at the last 10 days, if we look at yesterday, I only had three hours and 13 minutes of screen on time, six hours and 59 minutes of screen idle time. Today though, I've only used 25% of my battery and have one hour and 53 minutes of screen active time. I found something that was using a lot of power was mail actually using push. I switched it back to automatic and let it manage itself and it seems to have improved my battery quite a bit, despite it saying Twitter and my home and lock screen are taking up a lot of time. So you'll see in general, I'm not doing a ton of tasks a lot, but the home and lock screen lighting up with notifications is what I see the most with things like Twitter, for example, nothing should be running in the background though, as I have that turned off. So if we go into general, 
background app refresh, it should be off for most things with the exception of a couple different things I have it turned on for. So for Twitter, for example, if we go down here, I don't have an enabled, but it's using background tasks. So it really shouldn't be doing that, but it does seem to be, but I've been testing a lot of different things, turning mail off like that seems to help. However, battery life overall compared to what you've said actually varies a lot. 62% of you based on the YouTube community poll actually said that it's good. It's better than iOS 16.2. 27% said that it was bad or worse than 16.2 and 11% said that it's the same as 16.2. So positively it's 62% of you are saying it's better. And if you're wondering if you should upgrade based on battery, well, most people more than half are saying that it's better. Some are saying that it's the same, but only 27% say that it's worse. So it really depends on your overall apps and what you're doing with it. But most people are saying it's better, especially on the newer devices. So if you're wondering if you should upgrade, I definitely would also for those security updates as well. As far as overall speed and performance, it seems to be pretty good. Whether that's a new device or an older device, it's not perfect. But if we go into Apple music for the first time, it'll take a second to load here. We'll give it a moment over Wi-Fi, but it's nice and smooth to scroll right after loading. No issues there. Scrolling is fine. Going into the app store seems to be okay. Most people are reporting performance is quite good. Of course, this could just be my Wi-Fi being slow, but most people report performance overall is great. The same is true with heat overall. It's not getting very warm. A few people have said that it is getting hot, but most people are saying it's staying nice and cool to the touch. So in general, this seems to be a very solid update. Now let's take a look at some of your comments. McFly says iPhone 13 pro battery life is horrendous, way worse than 16.2, a bunch of little graphical glitches when going from portrait to landscape. When clicking on a Safari link in spotlight search, it just opens up the last tab in Safari instead of the link you've clicked on a bunch of little stuff that's annoying at some point, or that's just annoying at some point. Stacy Gray said 16.3 has been quite laggy for me in the past few days. Rebooting the phone fixes it, but I wonder if there's some kind of memory leak given that I'm not using iPhone 14 pro any differently. And I'm still using all the same apps as for battery life. That's been great. No complaints and update just had face ID stop working too. rebooted the phone fixed. Looking forward to the days when we have a nice stable iOS release again, as iOS 16 hasn't been that great for lots of people. Farhan said I had installed the RC on the day of the launch itself. And now it's been a few days. I can say that battery life on my iPhone 14 pro has increased, especially the standby drain is almost zero. I was just testing the phone from five days and 10 hours of standby would still keep my phone on 100%. Don't notice any bugs as of yet, but overall experience is way better than when I bought the phone as the battery has improved a lot. Andrew said, I'm running iOS 16.3 on my iPhone 12 performance is nice and fast. Overall battery life is about to be expected. I'm at 85% battery health currently and my AirPods max do tend to connect faster. I still do occasionally see temporarily squared off notifications. If I swipe up to view them on the lock screen before they correctly round out. I'm running iPad OS 16.3 on my iPad pro 12.9 fourth gen. And the experience is the same for the most part when viewing all of my open apps and swiping them away to close them out, whichever app is on the bottom far left will always instantly change to whatever app window moves to that position instead of naturally flowing to the next position. And you'll see five thumbs up there. So maybe more people are seeing that sort of thing as well. So with iOS 16.3, there are very different experiences. If you go to the YouTube community poll, go to the comments, you'll see most people saying that battery life is great, but of course there's people with different experiences. Some are saying it's the same. Some say it's worse, but you can read all about that here. Be sure to check that out if you haven't already. Also, let me know what you're looking most forward to this year. What would you want with iOS 17 or what product are you looking forward to? Do you care about Apple's AR VR headset? I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.